Hey everybody, welcome to another round of Can't You Place, and today we're going to be going through, continuing our series of Ashes Reborn by playing our next uh, Phoenix Born against a level 3 Chimera and in solo mode. So we're going to see how that plays out, we're going to try it out, see if we can win, if we can't, we're going to have a good time playing anyway, but we'll see how it shakes out. So before I begin, just want to say thank you to my patrons, YouTube subscribers, and if you're neither, just coming in to hang out and watch this lovely VOD. Thank you for joining me. Uh, thank you for joining me. <laughs> I can talk. And uh, we'll get into the playthrough. So let's introduce our Phoenix Born and see who we're dealing with. Okay, our Phoenix Born is Jericho Reborn. She's the Phoenix Born of the Fortified Throne. She is one of the, delu the three deluxe um, with Nomine and Odette who bring in different dice. Her dice that she's going to be bringing in is time magic dice that we're going to go through and talk about kind of what they do and what dice effect comes with them. She has a battlefield that holds seven units or con allies or conjurations or units that she can have at a time, and her spell board can only hold three unique spells at a time. They can be of the same spell, but they have to be unique. Three, Only three unique can be added. 17 health is going to be Jericho's lovely ability, and she comes with this prepare uh, side action that says, as a side action, we can exhaust this ability, spend one time symbol to search your draw pile for one card and set it aside. Shuffle your draw pile and then place that set aside card on top of it, which will be fantastic for her to play. So we're going to be starting off with her hand will come with five different cards that we're going to take a look at. The first one's going to be the standard bearer, and the standard bearer that we have on here takes a main action to play as well as a basic and a time-based die for you to spend to put this standard bearer ally on the battlefield. Once it comes in, it gains resourceful. When this unit comes into play, place one status token on that unit. At the beginning of the player turn phase, place one status token on this unit. So it's building up status tokens. Two, use Inspire. When this unit is declared as an attacker, you may choose a number of other attacking units up to the number of status tokens on this unit. Add one to the chosen unit's attack value for the remainder of the turn, which would be fantastic. She comes in with one life, three health, and one recover. Our next card that we're going to be using is Swift Messenger. Swift Messenger, it costs a main action as well as a time symbol to use and it comes in with swift which is a this is a pretty cool thing it says after a unit comes into play onto an opponent's battlefield you may play this unit from your hand without paying its main action cost so the main action cost is that it doesn't take a main action to do it you can just play this unit uh on your turn all you have to do is just pay the time symbol and that's it and it comes with assists when this unit comes into play I get to draw a card, so a little bit of double bonus there. As an attack, it, it has an attack one, life one, and a recover of one. We also have our next spell, which is Accelerate. This costs a side action, and it costs one time symbol to use to put to play, and then this is an action spell, so it's discarded. We can draw one card, change two dice in your active pool to a side of your choice, you may take up to two additional side actions this turn. So I think that's pretty incredible for what's needed because one of those could be our next ready spell in our spell board, which is the Summon Time Hopper. It costs a main action to put down. However, as a side action, you can exhaust this unit and spend the requisite symbols on the dice to place a Time Hopper Conjuration on your battlefield. This also has another ability, which is then, if you controlled an unexhausted Time Hopper with one or more status tokens on it, you may place an additional Time Hopper Conjuration onto the battlefield. So you can summon more than one with the use of one spell as a side action. That sounds OP, but it's all because of this lovely baby right here, which is the Summon Turtle Guard. This is a ready that goes on the spell board. This is a ready spell. It costs both your main action and your side action and a basic symbol to play. To put the spell into play, then it to use it, it costs a main action and a side action to exhaust it and spend a power die or that turtle symbol. You may place a turtle guard conjuration onto your battlefield. So pretty costly card, but the turtle guard is very strong. And you can focus one. Uh, if you do not, you may place one exhaustion token on an unexhausted turtle guard you control to place one exhaustion token on a target 
unexhausted unit and opponent control. So you can exhaust them if uh, you do not summon a turtle guard. You can then do that symbol, which is pretty fantastic. Another thing that's going to be coming with these new dice that we have, which are these time dice, is we're going to have time magic, which is which is with us. So let's take a look at this time magic card. This time magic card says that as a reference, so as a power symbol, it's the turtle as a class symbol, it's the hourglass, a time symbol, and then the basic is what you see there. Uh, for a side action, we could spend one power symbol, place one status token on a target unit you control, then you may remove one status token from a target unit or spell, period, anywhere. It's fantastic. It's a great thing that gels very well with Jericho. So I would probably say get used to seeing that if you have the symbols to pay for what you see. We'll be going up against the Corpse of Vero's Chimera Standard Level 1, but this is a, sorry, Standard Level 3 at one player. This has six threats that are in your face, it has 30 health, and it ultimates at three. So this is a very hard monster to fight. Uh, so as you can see, the starting grouping for the first six that you'll get, which is at the bottom, uh, the different blood symbols that you'll see to put on there, but you'll set that up. And this is going to be a hard, 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 hard fight. Also, we are playing with a mixed combo deck for the Chimera, which is mixed up of Shadow and Fury, which comes with the base game. Those two aspects come with the base game, but what we do is you separate out all of them into one blood and two blood cards, then select, then shuffle them all together, select nine of one, nine one bloods, nine two bloods, and then shuffle those decks together to make the 18 card deck that is the Chimera deck that you're going to use. So it's a lot of fun. You're going to see some randomness and I might die, but we're going to find out how it goes. Okay, so we're all ready to go. We've got our Chimera set up. We've got our threats in play. And so we go into phase one, which is the prepare phase, where we're going to roll these dice and see how this is going to work out. Now it's either going to go well or it's not going to go well. And I hope I get a lot, a lot, a lot of turtle symbols or power. So I like to say what the symbols are because if I'm like basic class and power, while a lot of people who play this game would say, oh yeah, I know exactly what that is. Super symbol. People, super simple, not super symbol. And, uh, but others who are not keen to this will just say, I'm just going to call that the hourglass, the turtle, and then the basic symbol. But it is basic class and power. So there we go. And we take the first player token. We turn that facing us as we're going to be the first person going. And we're ready to take on the Chimera with the symbols that we have. So the first thing I'm going to do is, as an action, I'm going to put in the Summon Time Hopper. And as a side action, I will pay the cost to be the boss. And actually, wait a minute. Do I want to do that? See, this is one of the things you got to think about. I think instead of doing that, because she's going to come out, I'm going to make her a, a semi-free, a free action base card, but not a free card to play. And then we have our standard bearer that we can put out if we want. I'm actually going to put the standard bearer out first as an action only because when she comes out, she gains a status token. And every time it's my turn, she'll gain a status token so we can really build her up. So that's going to be my action to put her up there. And then my bonus action is probably going to be, ooh, my bonus action is I'm going to, or my side action, I call it bonus, however you want to call it, it's up to you. So I'm actually going to use Jericho's ability, spending um, one class symbol to go through here. And I'm going to find a, I think I'm going to grab the, hmm, let's grab, let's grab the summon time hopper that was at the bottom of my deck. We'll give this a shuffle. So what you do is you search your draw pile for what you need, shuffle it up, and then put this on here. And what would be cool though, is I could have used that to get a swift one um, when I drew, but that's when I draw the card, we'll build those up. So that was my action, my side action, I'm all done. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a rage die and the behavior die, shuffle these up, and we're gonna see how this creature is going to respond. So we're gonna go ahead and roll it. And we've got a basic, so nothing happens, and we get behavior four. So we'll deal, let's take a look at what that behavior yields us. Behavior four says, as a main action, attack if able, if not, reveal. So since there's no creatures on the board for us to see, we are gonna reveal the, the leftmost card which is Glare. It's a Shadow Aspect Battlefield card. It will attack our main, our Phoenix Born if it does strike and it has Glare. The, oppo the opposing player cannot play action 
or reaction spells. I can still play ready spells, just not action or reaction spells. It has two attack, two life, and if we kill it, it will do one damage to the Chimera, which ugh, I hate this card so, so much. All right, with our Glary unit in play, that was the Chimera's turn, so now it is my turn. Uh, now, I think at the beginning, let's make sure, because this says at, at the beginning of the player turns phase, and that's where we are. We will go ahead and drop one on there. And then we will, because one was summoned, I get to pull out my Swift Messenger. All I have to do is just pay this cost to, to put her out. But she comes out not as a main action, which is fantastic. Instead, we will do main action, side action, basic to put out our summon turtle guard that should be cool so that was our main action side action that we did we are pretty much done so let's go ahead and grab one of these rage dice and the behavior and let's see what's gonna happen so we got another basic and a number five that ought to be interesting so let's take a look at what behavior that does all right number five says reveal and then attack with the revealed aspect so we grab the second card that is not revealed and we get a lovely constrict great great constrict when this unit comes into play the target opposing player must place one exhaustion token on a card they control and then defender this will defend the chimera as well as other units and it has four life fab Eulus. i hate this card so much this is going to be a fun game fun game so with the card sitting there we have to put one of these on a unit that we control on a card that we control oh here and i was supposed to draw a card with that which would have put the other summon time hopper into play so i forgot to grab that i just did which was the time hopper that i put on top of the deck so that was fun and it attacks well it's attacking the rightmost unit so i wouldn't put that here i actually would put that here and it would attack the rightmost unit when it comes out so it would attack the swift messenger the swift messenger will deal one damage to it it will deal two and kill my swift messenger so that will go in discard fabulous but you did attack so you are exhausted fun times fun times indeed okay well this is this is a nice pickle fun pickle so as a main action we'll put out a time hopper and as a uh, yeah let's put out the time hopper i should summon this guy right yeah i, I probably should because you're going to get something that makes me tick down those turtles so instead of doing that i'm going to spend uh these two to exhaust that spend this spend my action side action to put out a turtle guard this is an important card i'm going to show you what this card is the turtle guard is a conjuration that comes to battlefield it's rooted which means this unit cannot attack it can't be declared an attacker is what it means and then unit guard this unit may guard a unit that is being attacked so it has unit guard but that other ability is what makes it worth its withdrawal while this unit is exhausted prevent all damage dealt to this unit from being received yay yay good times nah 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 gonna have a good time so it's gonna be good so our turtle guard i'm gonna put it on yeah I'll put you here for your uh, I'll put you here for what I have planned and but that cost me my action and my side action and a symbol to do that which was rough so as the chimera's turn to roll and see what the chimera is going to do all right you got your first shard fantastic so you'll go there and then you got an 11 which is just awful so let's see what 11 does and 11 says raise one base one basic rage die one level and then reveal fun times indeed so we'll do the reveal first even though that's the that should be a side action but we we'll, let's take a look at it it's a fury aspect card that is whiplash when this unit comes into play destroy the imposing players target leftmost unit with one or more wound tokens on it if you cannot deal one damage to the players targets leftmost unit fantastic that's okay i won't die i won't die leftmost unit so let's take a look at what we're dealing with all right, so this says, when this unit comes into play, destroy the target's leftmost unit with one or more wounds. There's no wounds on this unit. Uh, if you cannot, deal one damage to that target's unit. So you will take one. That is an effect of the whiplash, not an attack. And then remember, we're supposed to raise one of these up as a side action. So that's where we'll go with it. And that will end 
your turn, my turn, my turn, my turn. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is, oh, you're gonna unit, no, you're exhausted, you can't unit guard, but the Chimera might, and that might be okay. And I can't attack with you, I can only defend. Okay, so then let's go ahead and use my main action to put down Summon a Time Hopper, and that was my main action. I think that my, oh, I hope you live through this. I think, oh my gosh, I hope you live through this. I really hope you live through this. Um, hmm, my side action, let's less use this other uh, symbol, the class symbol to do that, to summon a time hopper. Let's take a look at our time hoppers and see what they can do. All right, the time hopper is a conjuration. Uh, it has gift when this unit comes into play. You may place one status token on another target unit. This unit cannot block, sadly, it's fearful. It has one attack, one life, and zero recovery. And I did forget on the start of my turn to do three on that, so I did forget that one. So the time hopper will come out and it says when it comes, you can put a status token on another on another target unit. So we'll put one on the standard bearer, which will be fantastic. We'll then, ah, so that's my action side action. So we'll see what happens next. I'm curious, I'm curious, I'm curious, I'm curious. So we'll see what happens next. I have a two parts of a plan. So let's see what's gonna happen. First, let's deal with our enemy to see what they are going to do. So that's a basic, and they rolled a six. So let's see what the six does. It's going to reveal and then attack with revealed aspects. So let's reveal and see what our aspect is. Dark Descent, when this unit is declared as an attacker, place one exhaustion token on the opposing player's target leftmost unit. If that unit was already exhausted, discard it. Gross. And it's gonna attack my Phoenix Born. Gross. So my leftmost unit is going to be discarded, sadly. I should have put the turtle guard over there. Uh, but it will be discarded because it had it, it was exhausted. But it's still going to, that's declaring it as an attacker because that's when it came out. It did that automatically and it's going to hit my Phoenix Born for three attack, taking her down to 14 health. Already off to a fantastic start. Already off to one. But on my turn, I am going to play... Oh, this is hard how to do this, how to do this. I can place one status token on a target and you control. Then you may remove one status token from a unit or spell. So as a side action, I'm going to... I didn't roll the dice well for what I want to do. Uh, let's just set ourselves up for next round. So I'm going to play... You won't unit guard that, that whiplash dude. You won't do that, and this you, you won't block, but you will attack. Uh, so I would probably say, oh, this is going to hurt. I'm going to declare an attacker of the Time Hopper against the Whiplash. You're exhausted, so you won't guard, but the Chimera might, and on a 9+, plus, the Chimera does. So let's see what the Chimera does. So that's a 4. Awesome, so it doesn't block. Great, great, great. So the attack goes through. You had one life. I had one life. So you will die. The Chimera will take down to 29 for one blood, and my Time Hopper is dispelled. And that at least gets rid of one unit. So that was my main action. I honestly have... Well, I do. I do. I do have. I do have. So I'm going to play Accelerate. Uh, how am I going to do this? I'm going to play Accelerate, spending this... And it says, draw one card. So I got another Accelerate, okay. Change two dice in your active pool to the side of your choice. So I'm going all the way up to power, all right. And then you may take up to two additional side actions. And then this, oh wait, I can't do that. I can't do it. You stop me. So let's undo all of that. I can't do it, I don't have the power because of glare. So that won't work. Let's put this card back on top because we know it's an Accelerate. Instead, I will put down a time hopper and ew, let's let's just cry a little bit. Um, I'd like to do that. I'd like to cry. Side action. Let's bring out another time hopper. Uh, you're attacking right most unit center units. So I'm going to put you here, and I'll put a status token. And that will end, that was my action. Side action spell is exhausted. 
and we will sit and cry in a corner as to what just happened. So we've got another shard and another six. Well, we know six is reveal and then attack, so let's reveal and then attack with what's going on down here. Okay, we've got to regenerate. So uh, basically when you kill it, you roll a die, and if it comes up a basic, it comes back exhausted. My problem is, is that it's going to attack the rightmost unit. My rightmost unit will exhaust, which is fine. It will live, so it's fine. The problem is, I have not seen anywhere in the rules that says regenerate as a shadow aspect um, that any shards that you roll when this happens goes towards uh, the red rain counter. So I'm not going to play it that way. But if you find that in the rules, please let me know so I can correct it going forward. So this lovely reveal and attack comes out. So it will reveal. It will attack my rightmost unit. My rightmost unit has three health, so it will suffer two damage, but it attacks back for two, which would kill the unit, but let's find out if it does. It doesn't. So you come back, oop, wrong one, exhausted, and my unit actually is exhausted, so now this unit kick, uh, kicks in effect. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, we are in Buku trouble. We are in Buku trouble. Um, let's go ahead and meditate, and we can meditate off um, our deck. So every card we discard will raise that up. So let's, uh, biscuits. I can raise up one. I can't do spells, I can't do spells. I can't do, can't do, can't do spells. So I don't think there's much we could do in terms of what I want. I can't play action spells. That's no fun. That is no fun at all. Um, hmm. What to do, what to do. I think, methinks, I mean, I could attack you. The Chimera won't block for you. It would kill my Time Hopper, but it would put some damage on you where you won't come back. You've got one health, but you can always come back. You have three health. Honestly, I think this might be the best play. Um, so I think this might be the best play. So I'm going to attack you. You still get to hit me back. Um, but I put a damage on you at least with your stupid guard. Actually, you're guarded, right? Let me check the rules on that. I'll be right back. Okay. Looked online. Looked online. Uh, units that are exhausted do not counter. So I will attack with the hopper for one there. It still lives. So units who that are, I saw that. Thank you, BGG. Units that are exhausted do not counter, uh, and the Chimera won't guard for them. No other unit is guarding for them either, so it would just take the damage. And that is my main action. I don't have a side action because that card is stupid. So let's go ahead and roll and see what we're dealing with. So that's a basic and a nine. So let's see what nine does. Target a, So it says that target opposing player must lower two non-basic dice in there, and I don't have to, so <laughs> suck it. But it'll still reveal, and this is the last reveal card that it's going to do, which is Dark Descent. It doesn't attack, but it will at some point, which makes me sad. So that will be what comes out, and it, the Dark Descent says... Um, if it's exhausted, we discard our leftmost unit. Okay, everything's out. You will, it, the Chimera will no longer roll, and we will get punished if we don't do things. But guess what? There's nothing for me to do. I am through. So let's just take the punches to the face. All right, so that is going to be, I'm going to pass, which means this is going to go first. And it's going to attack my Phoenix Born for two, taking me down to 12. And then it will be exhausted. You're exhausted. You, when this unit is declared as an attacker, it's going to make me discard my leftmost unit. Uh, actually, um, it says place one exhaustion token on the opposing player's leftmost unit. If it's already exhausted, discard it. So it would be discarded. And then it will attack my Phoenix Born for three more. Yay! <laughs> Going down to nine. You're exhausted. Then it comes to you when this unit is declared as an attacker. Place one. Oh gosh, no. No. <laughs> oh, it hurts because, and you would say, wait, no, you can't because it says well, there's no damage being dealt. It's just a an effect that makes me discard it. And then it hits me again for three, taking me to six. This may not, I may not be long for this world. I may not be long. 
for this world at all. Okay, so uh, that is all of the Chimera's turn. So then we go into the recovery phase. All right, in the recovery phase, uh, any units with recover on them, I don't have any and the Chimera doesn't as well, would recover. We remove all exhaustion tokens off of everyone because that's, oh, that was a sad first round. That was a sad first round. Exhaust any dice that we have still in play. And we may do that, it's basics, I don't need them. Um, place one red rain token on the Chimera for each aspect in play. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. This does trigger the ultimate ability. And it says, so let's talk about what the ultimate ability says. After placing red range tokens on the Chimera, if there are red range tokens equal to or greater than the Chimera's ultimate value, resolve, resolve the following. Remove red range tokens from the Chimera equal to its ultimate value. So three will go off, leaving it with two. Great. Discard all cards on the Chimera's battlefield that it does not own. Deal one damage to all units and Phoenix Born. So my Phoenix Born will go from six to five health. That is fantastic. And then remove this card and top behavior card from the game. Fun times indeed. So we grab the ultimate one and behavior one cards and those are discarded. Now he's going to behavior two and behavior two ultimate. And I went down to five health. We There's two red rains on him. Fun times, fun times. We replenish all aspects. So yay, we just put one. It's up to six. Up to six. Yes, up to six. And then uh, what we'll do, we'll replenish status tokens. There's really nothing to do. And then we'll do the prepare phase. Oh, let's see how this goes. I want to roll all turtles this round. Oh boy, this could, this could be bad news, bears. Bad news. And it keeps, the hits keep coming, people. The hits keep coming. Is this is a smart move by me? No, not really. And I think that there's a specific way that you're, oh my gosh, just all basics. Did I get a single turtle? Or power, should I say? I got one. One single power. Awesome. Awesome. So... <laughs> Let's go ahead and deal with what's happening here. This is just, this is just awful. Dark Descent just constantly destroys my turtles. I'm kind of trapped. And then uh, we will discard any cards, but I'll hang on to the Accelerate because I'm probably going to need it. And then I will draw up to five cards. So I'll draw one, two, three, four. I have a Flash Strike, uh, which says you may play this card after an opponent has the choice to declare blockers or guard. Choose an opponent you control with one or more status tokens on it. For the remainder of the turn, add two to that attack. So this works with the standard bearer. Uh, outmatch. You may play the spell after an opponent declares attackers. Add four. I'd love to play all these lovely spells I have if it wasn't for this jerk. So big fun. Big fun indeed. All right. So that's my five that's in my hand. Uh, it's just, it just makes me sad. You make me sad. <laughs> okay, but even more fun, that is the Chimera's turn first now, so <laughs> this could all be for nothing. I at least did one damage to him, I'll say that if I die right now. So it's a basic and a four, so let's see what the new four does. The new four says attack, if able, if not, reveal. Alright, big fun, big fun. So it will attack with the leftmost unit, which will attack my Phoenix Born. I have nothing to defend. So that's going to be a lovely two attack, taking me down to three health, because, you know, I'm strong like that. And that will go there. That is awful. That is an awful card. Okay, my turn. If you attack the standard bear, I'm going to be sad. Oh, let's see. Oh my gosh, what do I do? Let's go ahead as a main action and summon the standard bear, which is going to cost our main action. Then we will give it one status token, and then uh, we will summon my main I, I can't play Accelerate! Oh. <laughs> oh gosh, this really hurts. That thing shut me down. Okay, I... I... Let's see if I have anything in my deck that can help me get out of this pickle. So maybe there might be something as a side action that I can use to find out what's going on. 
Okay, everything I found is, that can help me, and help me in a great way, the glare shuts down. I should have tried to get rid of that card instead of dealing with the constrict. So I'm going to put a swift messenger on top, and that's what I'm going to do. So that's my action side action. Let's see what happens now. Only good things. This is going to be a short game. So eight for ours. Let's see what eight does on this card. Deal one damage to the opposing players, target Phoenix Born, and then reveal. Well, we do have one reveal, and that's the only reveal that's going to happen, which is Rampage. <laughs> At the start of Chimera's turn, remove one status token from this unit to reroll all basic rage die. And there's two status tokens on this unit. Huzzah! Good times for all. All right, so we're going to add our two status tokens to that and uh, deal one damage. So I'll go down to two health. This is... This is a travesty. This is a two-round knockout. The glare shut her down. <clears throat> the glare completely shut her down. I've got nothing but spells in my hand, and I can't do anything. Anything. It's like, well, main action attack it. Well, this thing will guard for it. I should have killed that. That's that's my failing. Um, that is where I failed horribly. So I can't play any of these, so I might as well just put these down to the side until that thing is dead. So I will spend these two. Man, there's really nothing I can do. These are side actions. Maybe there's a way. Maybe there's a way. Let's do it this way. Let's do, we'll spend one here as a side action to do this. And I keep forgetting to give you your status token to summon a time hopper. And then I will, this thing says when the unit when this unit is declared as an attacker, you may choose a number of other attacking units up to the number of status tokens on this unit. Add one to each. So I'm going to attack. So basically we've got two attackers. Um, you are going to attack the glare and you're going to attack the constrict. So the constrict fight's going to go off first. And it says, uh, and add one to the chosen unit's attack value for the remainder of the turn. So... Let's do it. Let's do it. So constrict. The fight's just going to go how the fight goes. You're going to exhaust. I will exhaust. I will take two damage. I have three health. And you'll just, and you'll take two damage, which will kill you. Okay. Because I gained plus one. And two damage to you. <laughs> this barely worked. This is two parts of a, two, two halves of a plan. Um, and then you will attack. But guess what? Mama comes out to help her friend. So let's see how what Mama does. Come on, load. That's a two. All right, that's a two. So that's a two. You don't block. You're already exhausted. So you die, and you'll take one more blood. All right. <laughs> okay. All right, and you're exhausted. Ah, uh, I have a reaction spell, right? I have a reaction spell, right? To so the blockers. I don't. I'm dead i just lost i did the best i could because rampage would attack this would tick off and it says remove one status token to re-roll oh no all right then it will attack my rightmost unit which would kill it and this would exhaust okay 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 we're okay we're okay we're not dead yet we're not dead yet. We're not dead yet. We're not dead yet. We're gonna die here, so we need to do something about that. We need to do something about that, like summon a turtle guard. That's what we need to do. We need to summon a turtle guard. That's what we need to do. That's what we need to do, right? Right? Right. So I'm going to spend this, my action on my main action, to exhaust this. I'm so pumped to put down the turtle guard. Uh, the rightmost position, I don't mind. The center position, I do. So put down the turtle guard. And that's my action side action. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So then your turn. Play. Uh, oh, no. Wait a minute. I'm going to retcon and say I put this here. Instead of there, I put this here. Because you will discard her instead. I saw that. I saw that. A little bit of whatevers. And then you're going to attack, but you're going to guard. So it's three damage to two damage. You'll take two damage. And exhaust and that three damage was enough to kill you okay i don't have a turtle to make the outmatch work so i could have killed it straight out all right so then it is my turn <laughs> ah! as a side action let's play accelerate so draw a card 
Please. Swift Messenger. Yes. Okay. Change two dice in your active pool. So we're going full power on that. And I could take up to two additional side actions and I have my main action. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So two additional side actions and my main action. Two additional side actions and my main action. So my main action is going to put you out. And then when you, this unit comes into play, draw a card. Blink. Remove a target unit from the game. At the end of the turn, place that unit onto its owner's battlefield. And that's one side action. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We are going to get rid of you. Remove a target's unit from the game. I'll put you over here. And then you'll come back at the end. Oh, no, not at the end of this turn. At the end of this turn? Oh, that's not going to do me any good. That doesn't do me any good. That's to get things out of my way from blocking. Uh, that won't do me any good. What can I do instead? Okay, I got a reaction spell that should kill the regenerate for the swift messenger. Oh, it needs status tokens for that. Outmatch will put four. We'll, we'll do four. Um, we can get another hopper out as my second, as, as, as one of my side actions. Let's do that. We're going to do that to get another hopper out. All right. And then, so that's my main action, side action. Man, this is going to be very strategic. This is going to have to be very, very strategic. I'll be able to deal with you. So let's let it play where it is. Your turn. You're going to attack rightmost units, so one to two. We'll roll a die. All right, so like I said, I'm not playing with that. So you would die, giving one, knocking you down to 25, killing the time hopper. Okay, all right, so... It's my turn. I need to survive this round, and you're going to try to exhaust my, this unit and kill me. I need to. I think I just have to attack you, and I need to outmatch. So that's what I'm going to do. Swift Messenger is going to attack you um, with reaction spell. You play this after an opponent declares attackers. Nope. Uh, you you play this card, but I need a. Choose a unit you control with one or more status tokens on it. For the remainder of the turn, add two to its attack and gain the following ability, Quick Strike. How do I get a status token on you? I can use the turtle to gain the status token, but then I can't meditate. Is there any other way around this? Is there any other way around this? I can accelerate. I can accelerate, and I think that might help me. So I'll do that, spending this to draw a card, turtle card, tick both of these up to turtles and then i get two more side actions okay <laughs> all right so i can all right so then i can one side action is i'm going to spend it on my time magic spell put a status token on you uh then you may remove one status token from a target or spell let's remove one from here i'm so scared i'm so scared Okay, then I can I can summon a time hopper or I can do flash strike right now. I'm going to do flash strike right now. So I'm going to spend this last one. You may play the spell after an opponent uh, declares blockers. So I'm attacking. Your chimera is going to try to block. Choose a unit you control with one or more status tokens on it. For remainder of the turn, add two. So, and I gain quick strike. While this unit is attacking, it deals its damage before uh, units in battle. So the only thing that will stop me is if i roll a nine or higher oh six yes yes so with quick strike i auto kill this creature taking you down to 23 oh. <laughs> you live because you had quick strike and we're alive we made it we made it folks we made it okay Oh my gosh, that, that took a lot. That took a lot. But uh, they, they're done. I'm done. We're done. We're done. So remove, uh, re uh, let's see, what is it? Remove wounds from units that have recovery. You don't have any. Uh, take off these. My gosh, why is this so hard? I don't have any more dice to exhaust because I'm sweating here. And then there's two, so there's two more that's going to go. It's going to trigger the next ultimate ability. Oh, dear. So let's see what happens here. All right, the ultimate says, after placing red range tokens on the Chimera, if there are red range tokens equal to or greater than the Chimera's ultimate value, so remove down to three, which leaves one left on there. 
Uh, discard all cards. Deal. Oh no! I lost due to the ultimate ability. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, that will do it. So two damage to the Phoenix Born knocks me down to zero, and would kill this creature. And we lost. Oh my gosh. That was a rough go. That was a tough fight. Jericho is a fun character to play. I think that it just didn't work out because when Glare, I think Glare was what shut her down. I had a bunch of spells in my hand that I couldn't use, and I was silly enough not to get rid of Glare as early as possible. That is a terrible card for reactionary and action spell uh, casters, which Jericho is. So. That's how it goes. Jericho Reborn versus a level 3 uh, Virus. So we'll keep this going. We'll see how it comes up. But until then, thanks everybody. I love you. And there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Bye-bye. <laughs>